we're in for a uh, another repair video today and today we're going to need some cable because we're fixing this looks pretty innocuous got a button and a two prong pin uh, plug on the end this is off an x-ray machine made in 1968 I've been playing with this um, and I'm trying to get it up and ready to go uh, for the local animal rescue but uh, at this point we're going to need to find a digital uh, cassette for it that's likely to cost about 14 grand so before I go to the expense of actually looking for donations and getting this thing working I need to know that it actually works properly last time I tested this I had the exposure set to 0.03 seconds and you can see from this little clip I'm going to throw in here that it definitely wasn't 0.3 seconds it was quite a bit longer so uh, this lead however is only about a meter long and uh, you can hear from the background of that clip the uh, little Geiger counter going off which is my uh, radio code 101 it's going off its tits because of all the backscatter so I'd like to get uh, a little bit further than a meter away when we test that later on I have a little 433 megahertz remote control kit I might make a wireless remote for it but uh, we need to see if the timer works so uh, I'm going to use some of this cable that I had set aside for my Land Rover Parenti project and use it for a trigger button on this uh, because uh, well I don't like getting irradiated and uh, I have to sit my license out for three months so uh, yeah I guess we'll use this instead we'll get more later all right first order of duty I need to look at how to uh, get the switch open which looks like it's got a couple of uh, Phillips screws there all right fairly simple opening and the screws remain somewhat captive and this button looks pretty good I might put a little bit of Teflon spray in there but uh, other than that it's a pretty standard micro switch not a bad job now for the plug shell I've got a couple of different things to look at first we have the cable strain relief and uh, the, usually there is a uh, like a lock nut or something midway through here but we're going to take in fact I might make our life easier I intend to rewire this anyway so let's um, take a little bit of strain off things for us spin you around okay now there should be a lock nut somewhere okay this one would appear to be just a little different to the ones I've dealt with before it appears that this part is threaded in all right that's a little different and a bit of old insulation tape this looks like it's had a repair because uh, this is certainly not 1968 insulation tape in here I'd say that the reason this is so short um, is probably because it's been repaired a few times and the cables got shorter over time uh, we're gonna probably do away with all this bit of cable so we're going to uh, trim you off try and dig down as far as we can under this tape and just trim it off all right soldering station on got a blue tack here stick this down all right got auxiliary lighting fume extraction soldering iron is hot move our bismuth out of the way I think it's gallium okay let's have a closer look at these focus please all right these don't look like solder cups, they look like straight out pins. I'll give them a bit more of a touch with a soldering iron here. Do they clean up like a solder cup? No, they're wire wrap pins almost. We can work with that. Alright, we're going to strip some cable back here. Now, when it occurs to me we should probably thread this through the cable gland first. Uh, before we get too in depth. Alright bit of heat shrink we found some clear stuff actually given how short that plug backing is we might do half of that again bit of heat shrink there we go and we need to tin these ends definitely need my good weller iron happening again this one just doesn't quite get the heat into things I have a bit of a method to my madness so just uh, bear with me for a minute 
Now if I do this slightly offset, I can roll over and solder the other one on the other side also slightly offset and things should fit nicely. Oh, those pins twist. Interesting. I'll train this cable to roll over a bit too. Right, now this cable is really designed for slightly thinner two core flex like mains cable or something not the uh, heavy DC cable I'm putting in here but we are going a fairly decent distance and I'm pretty sure this handles mains voltage so we definitely want that extra um, insulation in there it's not the best positioning from the pins and I know people will be critical of that it certainly looks better than what was in there but uh, I need to keep these tucked in here so they fit inside that shell all right I'm already frustrated with this cable I keep dropping stuff it's difficult stuff to work with all right does my beeper work? Why is my beeper not working? That is, okay. So, no short circuits, no short to the shroud. Good. All right. All right. Now, just to keep everybody happy, I threaded a piece of heat shrink along the entire length of the cable so we can slide over those two bits. Because again, I'm not sure if we're carrying mains cable here or mains voltage. We'll pull this piece of heat shrink right up inside here. Make sure there are no exposed conductors there. Strain relief. Oh. Maneuver this little bit over. Get our missing screw. And our small flat blade. Now if I sound a bit apathetic towards this project at the moment, it's because that cable is actually a bit of a pain to work with. At least on this size stuff. All right, we need to strip a bit of wire back here. These things make life much easier. So I guess we're going to flip our black one around the back. We're going to come up to about there. So that's going to be good. You will trim you about there. And you will get trimmed at about the same height there. Okay, we've got our conductors uh, stripped here. Going to um, where we get our solder in the right spot. We'll wet these down with a bit of solder. Get it nicely soaked in there. Glad I have fume extraction right now. So we'll get this nice and hot and soak it onto there. Alright, I had the problem with this cable trying to lever this off the blue tack all the time. And when you touch this it would fray out. There's so much tension in this cable. In any case, um, this looks slightly better than what I had in terms of connections. Hopefully it fits back in the shell. All right, I'm going to jinx myself and I'm turning the soldering iron off. This has been somewhat more frustrating than I hoped. All right, we stuck a couple of bits of heat shrink in there. It gives me a little bit more peace of mind. There is still potential for that to touch, although I see in the top here, these two blocks may push that contact away. But uh, I think I may re-solder this around the corner a little bit, just to save that as well. Alright, I like this uh, pin arrangement just a little bit better. There's a little bit more tolerance between those contacts. There we go. Drop our button back in. Do a function test. Works. Watch what happens when I let it go the way I had it. It all rolls around like this on the cable. We have a beeper in here. We've got our continuity testers. Okay, that works. Now we can test if the timer works on the x-ray machine. All right, we've got the temporary set up in the shed. This is a jerry can full of water. Using as a bit of a shield slash moderator. Helping stop some of the backscatter. This is a lead plate on the floor. It's one of the um, one of the cassettes that came with it. This unit's from 1968. I've got it set to the one second setting. We have it set to two milliamps. Let's set to 15 milliamps. Maybe this was the high range setting. I'm not sure. I think that should be two, but it might be something higher. Anyway, we'll set that to two. That's our line voltage. We'll check that before we start and 60 kvp so we should be pretty right this is in the center position all right we need to set our aperture nice and narrow here where are we 
And uh, just so you, I know it's not running, I do have a decimeter on me. That's pretty good. Okay. So let's double check our settings here. Around 15 milliamps. Previously I was on this, which I thought was 2 milliamp. It seems strange that it's on this end. I'm going to go with a safe bet of 15 this time. Because last time we had it on 2, we got 5 rads out of it. We're on 1 second setting. Line voltage is correct. It looks pretty good. Let's line up our aperture here. Right on that. And our camera's there. Water for moderator. Now we have way more settings. So let's see if we get one second. Let's go. Three, two, one. Okay. I'm going to get a bit further back. We certainly got more than one second on that. Oh, I think it did one second. Let's try again. Okay, that looks like one second. And I'm getting significantly less radiation out here. So that's a good sign. Let's try a half second time burst. Okay, time for half second. That sounds like half a second. I think the time is working. Let's go right down to the shortest one. See if that works. That's a very short burst. I think the time is working. All right, let's go to a long exposure. Like uh, I have a retired um, x-ray technician has given me a bit of advice on this. He will remain unnamed for obvious reasons. But uh, we'll get to go 10 seconds here. I'll wait to the camera timer. Two, one. Right, that was 10 seconds, and it works all right. So, and the high alarm hasn't gone off, so this setup's working reasonably well. So, well, I guess we can turn it off for the night, but good success, the button works. For safety, we're gonna turn that right down. Um, now we can look into digital cassette options. I might be CR or I might be DR. I've gotta do my homework, I'm still learning on which ones we can deal with. Ideally, it would be nice to get one of those nice uh, Canon DR cassettes. But uh, last time I checked, a second-hand one was 14000 Australian dollars. A bit more than I can afford to donate to the animal aid. So uh, anyway, and I need to fix this leg and everything as well. But for tonight, I'm happy with the results. We'll see you in the next one, and we'll get myself a good thumbnail with this.